my name is Madeleine Fote and I am the director of the Eco Sunrise program at Stockholm Environment Institute. What is your priority uh, in ecological sanitation promotion for developing countries? Well, our pro priority is actually to provide accurate knowledge and make sure that we communicate what is the newest research and the best practices for the developing countries, but also for Sweden and the European community, because this is not something that is only for developing countries, it's actually for the whole world. It's a, it's a matter of uh, a paradigm shift, uh, looking differently on sanitation and see waste as a resource. It's a new way of looking at sanitation. But uh, to do this and to be able to have some impact and to, to see some, uh, to, to see it into practice, we need to train a lot of people. We need to create what we call a critical mass among the professionals. We need to have a greater understanding of the impact of the, uh, what the environmental impact the current uh, conventional systems have or the, the, that the fact that 2.6 million do not have a uh, toilet, what impact does it have on health and whatever. So we need to combine it with uh, uh, capacity development, we need to combine it with uh, communication and we need to transmit the knowledge, the research we have into the policy making. And that's what we are actually doing at the Stockholm Environment Institute and with this program. It's a global program. We are working through Knowledge Node based in eight regions in the world. We have, we have one Knowledge Node in Central America hosted by RASCA, which is a regional network on water and sanitation. We have one Knowledge Node in Bolivia. It is a Knowledge Node that is consisting on a platform, sector platform, with 200 actors in sanitation in Bolivia. And we have one knowledge node in South Africa. It's hosted by a Water Research Commission and the WINSA. And it, um, it communicates with more than 2,000 uh, uh, actors in uh, the SADC region. We are working and collaborating with NETWAS, which is also working with a big Ugandan network on water and sanitation and ecological sanitation. We are collaborating with in Nepal, in Nepal, that is an uh, environmental and health NGO working with research and capacity development. We are working with an uh, ecological uh, sanitation network on the Philippines and they are also working a lot within policy making and they have achieved, they are now working on a sustainable sanitation roadmap for the Philippines which is quite interesting development. And then finally we have the knowledge node in China. Uh, uh, and that is hosted by a university, Beijing University of Science and Technology, and uh, an NGO wor wor uh, working on issues on water quality, it's called Water Alliance. And I forgot also, we have a West African knowledge node where ECOSAN has uh, made great impact for the poorest farmers where they have really been managing to uh, see the value of uh, uh, <coughs> returning nutrients into agriculture. So how, how are these knowledge nodes uh, being organized and uh, just sharing information uh, to develop themselves uh, as a capacity uh, building organization at these different levels? Well, many of them have already uh, been working within the sector. They are already working with capacity development in different areas. What we have done is that we actually uh, feed it in some more knowledge within the area of sustainable sanitation and that helped them to focus their actions to a certain extent and some of these networks got suddenly a good content which they could develop in different contexts. Now uh, there is no fixed project document for knowledge, no, no it was developed based on what was the regional situation and what is how is sustainable sanitation defined in different contexts, in different regions and in different countries. 
So there is a very different way of working with this topic in the different regions. In, in Central America it has been more of a mapping exercise to identify where are the gaps. Uh, there is a big gap, for example, at the university curriculums. Most engineers are trained in water, some in sanitation. And in the sanitation curricula, maybe 90% is conventional sanitation and only 10 is uh, other system, decentralized systems or uh, more uh, uh, reuse-oriented uh, sanitation options. So at least we try to uh, develop a little bit and develop also curricula and, uh, in those regions. So it's really a very uh, different uh, program approach in each node, depending on what level they are and what they have been doing, what experience they have, and what gaps we can help them to follow, uh, to, to fill up. Do you think the policymakers uh, have uh, given priority to the information and knowledge management initiatives uh, uh, like that has been done by SEI? Well, yes, I do think so. Or they have, we have managed uh, policy change. For example, in, uh, we, we entered uh, to work with the Knowledge Node in Honduras, for example, in time when they were developing their national policy, which is uh, integrated water and sanitation management policy. And there the concept of sustainable sanitation and the sanitation as uh, a system approach has been fully incorporated. So that was a coincidence, but it has been accepted and it's now in the law in Honduras, which is quite nice. In regards to the Philippines, the Philippine node was asked by the Philippine government to, to uh, uh, help out to organize the East Asian sanitation summit that was held in the, by the end of January, 19, or this, um, this January, and as a consequence of that and the preparation and so forth, the Manila Declaration clearly states also the system approach to sanitation and that it should, the sustainability criteria should be uh, taken in consideration. And that was a document that was signed by 13 ministers in the East Asian countries. So yes, I think they have actually managed to influence the policies because it's there now, yeah? So you are hopeful in generating interest uh, to the policymaker uh, to uh, develop a good uh, platform for uh, was professionals or community people uh, in terms of sustainable sanitation capacity development initiatives? Yes, I, th I think we are. There is an increasing knowledge, and mm -hmm. we are the advocacy we are doing through Susana and through su sustainable sanitation nodes, and uh, it goes down to different levels. So we have a global advocacy, we have a regional, and uh, depending on how they design the project document goes sometimes down to community level and sometimes it's a little bit depending on